Hey, I'm Patty from Alderman Farms, and I'm so excited that Jenny Pratt from Pratt Family Homestead has invited me to be part of the Frugal Family Food February col collaboration. And this month's theme is Date Night at Home. Um, and I'm very thankful to Amanda from The Fundamental Home uh, for putting this all together. And you can check out her channel. It's uh, linked in the description below, as is Pratt Family Homestead. And if you don't know about the Frugal Family Food Facebook community, they have over 100,000 members, and they are a very active group, and they are always posting different questions with answers and also lots of different recipes. And of course, ways to save on groceries to be very frugal. Today, I'm going to be cooking pork roast with rice and gravy, roasted Brussels sprout salad with homemade Thousand Island dressing, onion rolls, kind of, onion rolls done in a loaf. I'm gonna try something new on a video. So, but anyway, I think it'll be good. And also, a queen loaf. Today is actually Valentine's Day, and so this is what I'm making my honey, my Valentine, for his supper. I'm going to be following the recipes out of my 20 Easy Instant Pot recipe book and my sourdough book, Start to Finish. And so, anyway, you can follow along with me if you have the books. If not, you can jot down the recipes. I'll be telling you exactly what I'm doing. Or if you would like to purchase the books, they are available in ebook or paper book, and that'll be a, there'll be a link in the description below also. So, let's get cooking. Okay, we're going to start off with the sourdough because it's going to ha go through a few different risings. Um, but let me first explain to you, I mentioned that I'm going to be making a queen loaf, and some of you may not know what that is. That is going, that's a spinoff of the king cake. Um, a king cake is something that people make, it's in a round shape. Um, and it's usually done around Mardi Gras. Well, I wanted to sell it at the farmer's market. The farmer's market is June and July, and so I came up with the idea of doing it in a loaf, and you're still gonna, and it's got a filling, usually a fruit filling sometimes with cream cheese and stuff like that. Really haven't decided on what filling I'm gonna do, but I'm going to make a queen loaf, so it's gonna have some kind of filling in it. But anyway, so it's a sweet bread. Um, I'm using the same dough for the queen loaf as for the rolls. I'm just going to separate them and doing them into two different batches. I'm also reducing down my recipe for sourdough to make, I'm only using a third of the recipe um, because I'm not making a bunch of different things and I don't want a lot of things left over. So I want to maybe, maybe have a little bit left over for tomorrow, but mostly eaten up tonight. Okay, the first thing you're going to add is a half a cup of water. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is my starter. And as you can see, it is not active. It's been in the refrigerator. And I haven't had it out very long. It smells good and sour, but it is not very active. So I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to put yeast in it. Uh, the reason uh, I'm not just doing a plain white bread is because I really like the texture and the softness that the sourdough adds to it, but it needs some little help, a little help rising because it's not very active. It's been in the refrigerator, which it was dormant, and had I been feeding it for about three days, it would be active and ready. So I'm just going to cheat and add a little bit of yeast in here. So there's my sourdough. And I'm going to do one tablespoon and one teaspoon of sugar. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of yeast. And I'm going to give this a good stir. Mix it up. I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to put two and a half tablespoons of oil. 
um, and I'm using coconut oil, so it's kind of it's firm, but I believe it's going to melt in the water because that was warm water. All right, there we go. Coconut oil is good for a lot of things, and it's very good for dry hands. And of course, I will be kneading this in a little bit, so it'll help the dough not to stick so bad to my hands, too. Well, that's not incorporating great, but you know what? When I add the flour, it'll get all mixed in, so. Not a problem. And I'm going to put two cups of flour. Then I'm going to mix one cup at a time. Well, I'm going to mix this one cup, and then I'll add in smaller increments, just in case, because you never can tell. Sometimes it'll take the full amount. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it takes more. It kind of depends on the weather and the atmosphere. Once it gets dry, you know, dry enough, you can just start adding flour and use your hands. I also have a KitchenAid mixer that does wonderful at this, but I like to show people you can do it with your hands too, and it's almost as quick to do it with your hands, unless you're doing large batches. I know by doing the yeast in the sourdough, you're not getting quite the nutritional benefits because we're not going to be doing the long rise, but I will still get a very similar textured bread. It may be a little bit lighter than traditional sourdough, but it'll still have the flavor. This is going to be all that I'm going to add to it now. You could also use regular vegetable oil in your sourdough um, instead of the coconut oil. You could also use butter. When I bake for the farmer's market, I do use butter. I mean, I do use oil. And sometimes when I make it for just us, I put butter. It just depends. I don't really find that any any of it makes a, that big of a difference. You know, health-wise, of course it does, but as far as it baking and everything, I don't find it makes that big of a difference. Okay. I'm pleased with the texture of the dough. It's a little on the moist side. I could put a little bit more flour. In fact, that was my whole second cup there. So I'm just gonna knead that in. I just don't wanna put too much flour. I don't want a too stiff of a dough because uh, when making the queen loaf, it's nice to have a ni nice soft dough. Because I will uh, be rolling it out some.
open all my bowls. Just a little bit of coconut oil. Press my dough down, turn it over, and now I'm going to cover it. I'm going to let this rise till it about doubles in size, which should be about an hour. This is one way that I save money when I'm buying my meat. This is a whole pork loin. It was on sale for $1.39 a pound. Of course, you have to buy the whole thing. This is almost 10 pounds of meat, and this can easily be three meals for us, if not more. Well, it'll definitely be th more than three meals, but I think I'm going to cut it into three different roasts. Uh, it was nine. It ended up costing twelve dollars and ninety-seven cents. So that's uh, a good deal on this meat for just a dollar thirty-nine a pound. So anyway, I have a scale. Um, which I, I don't care if they're different sizes, but um, I do want um, to, I'm going to weigh my roast after I get them cut because where well, I'll know how much to cook them. And so I think I'm going to divide it up like that. this one a little bit different than uh, what's in my uh, cookbook. I'm going to be cooking it um, the same temperature and everything, but I'm going to actually stuff this roast. And what that means is I'm going to cut holes in it, and I'm going to actually stuff garlic and onion and seasoning down in the holes. You just make cross marks like that. Okay, and I haven't mixed up the seasoning. We'll have to mix up the seasoning. Okay, I did. I had to make sure I weighed the roast. It's 3.85 pounds. Of course, it's a little bit more with this, but it's not much. So 3.85 pounds. I'm going to remember that when I go to cook it. Okay, now for the seasoning that I'm going to use to stuff it with is going to be salt. And it's no certain amounts. I just uh, use, oops, not quite that much. Hmm. Take some of that out. Oop. So, probably about, um, well, here, let me measure it and see. I always just sprinkle it in. Probably about a tablespoon of each. The tablespoon might be a little much. Try a teaspoon in each. And if you need to make more, you always can. So let me go back down to a teaspoon. Let's see how that looks. We'll just have a real garlicky roast. It'll still be good. Yeah, try a teaspoon of each. And then you're going to mix that up. That's a lot of seasoning. I actually think I'm not going to use all this because this is way too much. So do a teaspoon each. And sometimes I'll make a paste out of this. I'm not going to since I'm going to save some of it. Okay, then you're going to take it and you're going, and typically I do this in the pot, inside the pot where it doesn't make as much of a mess, but where, with, since I'm videoing, I'm going to do it like this. Um, whether you have it in a paste or it's loose, you spoon just a little bit in the hole. And this is probably about uh, uh, half a teaspoon of what I've, I'm putting in the hole. And don't worry about if it gets on the sides because you're going to stuff it with the onions. Now, then you come through, and don't, don't fill the hole with onions. Push some onions in the hole. 
chopped onions. And then you're going to take uh, some garlic that is cut into little cubes. You push that in the hole. And then you'll finish filling with the onions. That helps to get seasoning all through your roast. And then what I do is I will take my seasoning that I made, any that I have left, and I sprinkle over the top. If I use everything that I had made, I will just uh, sprinkle garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and Tony's over the roast. And there's that. Then we're going to add it to the pot. And we're going to leave the rack in the pot to keep the roast up off the bottom. And this is my large 8 quart. You can fit this in a 6 quart. All right, and I'm going to put a little, well, I'm going to put my water. I'm going to put a cup of water. Actually, I'm going to put two cups of water. i got to go get another cup of water. And I'm going to sprinkle some more seasoning. I want it covered good with seasoning. And I even want some of the seasoning to go in the water. So there we go. Alright, and then here's my second cup of water. And then I'm going to put, I have some chopped up garlic here. I'm just going to sprinkle over it. Some of it's fallen in the water, and that's what I want. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the onions. Just sprinkle it over the roast. Some's going to go in the water, and some will stay on top. All right, now, my roast was 3.85 pounds, so I'm just going to say it was 4 pounds. You cook it 15 minutes per pound. Um, plus, um, I like it to be a little more tender, so the extra time will be good. So I'm going to take my roast and put it in my pot. I'm going to push manual, and I'm going to get it to 60 minutes. Sixty minutes, and I'm going to place my lid on there. I'm going to make sure my valve is closed, and there she goes. It'll be done in approximately an hour once it comes up to pressure. Now, if you don't have an instant pot, you can still do this recipe. All you have to do is cook it for 30 minutes per pound. So, your four pound roast would take two hours. No problem. And it will be delicious in the oven, just like it'll be delicious out of the instant pot. Okay, I've washed my Brussels sprouts and now I'm going to prepare them. I'll cut the ends off and some of them look a little yucky so I'm gonna peel some of the leaves off of them okay next we're going to coat them with some bacon grease so I'm just got some bacon grease and I'm going to just rub it all around on them. You can do this with olive oil or any other kind of oil. You actually don't have to have any oil on there. Just want a little bit. It will help the seasoning to stick. You can also use cauliflower for this, uh, squash. Any vegetable would be good. And the seasoning that I made up, which is salt, Tony's, garlic powder, and onion powder, I'm going to use it. 
So it's good I made a little too much because I would be using all the same seasonings anyway. And just toss it up good. I'll set these aside and they're ready to go in the oven. They take about 30 minutes on 350 to cook. Right, we're gonna go ahead and get our rice started. I'm gonna make uh, six cups of rice. Uh, I wanna have some left over where I can do some stir fry tomorrow. And so in the instant pot, you're gonna put, um, I like to put my rice first actually. I'm gonna put one and a half cups of rice. And I'm going to put two cups of water. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. You can stir the water and, and taste it and see if it's salty enough. Uh, you'll place your lid on. Oh, there's a piece of rice right there. I like to make sure there's nothing right here because it could prevent this pot from sealing. So, turn your pressure valve closed. Uh, it's going to be manual. Okay, high pressure for three minutes. And then you're going to let this natural pressure release, um, which means that you're just, when it, when it beeps, you're just going to turn it off and let it sit there and let the pressure come down naturally. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get my onion rolls ready. I'm going to weigh my dough. It's a nice pretty dough. And it's 1.25 pounds of dough. So I'm gonna take, I just want a half a pound of dough for my rolls and I'll put the rest in my queen loaf. That's close enough right there. All right, I'm going to use this one for my rolls. I'm going to spray my pan. I'm just using a small loaf pan. Right now, I'm just going to break this apart into smaller pieces. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to roll a ball in my hand. I'm going to roll it in butter. Then I'm going to roll it in onion. And, and dehydrated onion. And just place it in my tin. Alright, that's what it'll look like. I'm going to go sit it over there on the, by the oven because it's preheating to cook the Brussels sprouts and let this rise. Alright, next I'm going to get the queen loaf going. And here's my dough and it's about three quarters of a pound. I think I might got some onion on it. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to get it rolled out. It's a little bit bigger than what I'm used to doing. And also, my onions were flying everywhere. Also, um, I usually make this in a loaf, but I'm gonna try and make it into a heart shape because it's Valentine's Day. We'll see how that goes.
Okay. I decided I'm gonna do blueberry, and I'm gonna try my blueberry jelly. It's so good, and I think it would make a great loaf. So, we're gonna see. I do use, I make some strawberry figs, and I do use it in my queen loaf, so I'm hoping that the blueberry will do as well. Then you're gonna take, this is cinnamon and sugar. It's half, um, like, be two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of cinnamon. And you're gonna sprinkle this on your dough very liberally. And I sprinkle some over the jelly too. Here ready and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just pick up your dough and put it over the top of your jelly or whatever filling you're using you don't want something that's super super soupy I actually use a, some pie filling sometimes on it you pinch your edges together And I like to have my edges underneath the bottom. I don't think I'm going to have enough. I don't think it's going to be big enough <laughs> to make into a heart. We're just going to try it and see. See what shape we end up with. <laughs> Well, it looks a little bit like a heart right now, so we'll see how it turns out. This has to rise until it's just about doubled. Okay, for homemade Thousand Island dressing. Uh, this is uh, my little thing with the blender for the Ninja, and you can use any regular blender, it doesn't matter, but it calls for one cup of mayonnaise, And I'm using a half cup measure, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put two of these. And y'all, you know, I actually forgot, I like to put my pickles and my onions in the bottom where the mayonnaise don't stick down there. So if you're doing this in a blender, put the pickles and onions down in the bottom. And I almost, I really don't have quite enough mayonnaise for this, but it'll work. And you know those the how, those saying, do as I say, not as I do? That's the same thing with this because I'm not, I don't really measure this too much. I have a recipe that I kind of go by, but I just kind of dump it in there too. So, in my ketchup, I'm just going to put, I'm going to put half of a cup half of a half cup in there, so it calls for a fourth of a cup of ketchup. That's, I guess, confusing. So a fourth of a cup of ketchup. Um, two tablespoons of vinegar. And if you wanted to use apple cider vinegar, you could. It would change the taste. I know this isn't a true tablespoon measurement, but that's what I'm talking about. I'm kind of not following the directions. One. Two. One tablespoon plus a teaspoon of sugar. And I got coffee. I'll be right back. That would not have been good to put coffee in there. All right, so one tablespoon and a teaspoon. And 
and then it calls for a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of pickle relish. But I don't, oh, I almost dropped it. I don't have pickle relish, I have pickles. So I'm going to put a pickle. And I'm using dill pickles because I don't really like sweet pickles. And so I'm going to say that's about a, a tablespoon and a teaspoon. And then it calls for two teaspoons of mis minced onion. So I'm going to put in my onion. Like that. And then it calls for a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'll just do like that. Maybe a little more. There you go. That's a little much. And then a dash of black pepper. And then you puree it. It's very, very simple to do this. Okay, I'll be right back. Hold your ears. I want to show you why you should have put you should put your pickles and your onions and your vinegar in the bottom because mayonnaise sticks up there. So I'm gonna have to stir mine. And it is best if this is done ahead of time. Let it chill and let your flavors blend. Let's check the Brussels sprouts while we're doing this and see how they're looking. You see how they're starting to look a little charred on top? That's what we want. And so these can cook. I, I just set my timer for 15 minutes to check them. So I'm going to turn my pan around and I'm going to put them back in there. I'm going to try them for 10 more minutes. All right, so let me get this stirred up. And I'm going to blend it one more time. Had I put my pickles and my onions in the bottom and my vinegar, it wouldn't have uh, been so bad like that. And here is your Thousand Island dressing. Much quicker than running to the store. And tastes better too. All right, the roast has cooked. Uh, all the pressure has come out of the pot. And so, now I'm just gonna set my lid there. We won't block the light. Now show in there, we're gonna uh, remove the roast from the pot and we're going to thicken our gravy and a very dear friend gave me these little uh, gloves they're specifically for the instant pot I'm going to scrape the onions off the top where they will be in my gravy okay so I'm going to grab the little handle. This is one good, another good reason to have it on a rack where you can take it out like that. And I have a plate right here ready for it. I'm going to slice that up. But before I do that, I'm going to I'm going to turn the pot on saute right here. And I want my gravy to get good and hot um, before I thicken it. Now the way I thicken gravy is I have put three tablespoons of cornstarch in here with some water and I've stirred it up and as soon as my, my gravy starts to uh, boil then I will add this and my gravy will thicken I'll immediately turn it off so I'll uh, show y'all that in just a minute okay my water is boiling and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my cornstarch mixture in there and stir it. Actually had it boiling a little too fast. It's kind of clumped up, but that's not a problem. I can actually take a little whisk and whisk it in together. It's perfectly fine if you want to thicken with a roux or, you know, with flour or whatever. There we go. And turn that off.
Well, it's all done and we're ready to eat our Valentine's dinner. So ready. She's been killing me with the <laughs> smells in this house. And honey, it looks and smells amazing. Well, thank you. This is something new that I've tried. Um, it's, it's onion rolls, which I've made before, but I put them in a loaf and look. They pull apart. Very nice. Isn't that cool? So, I miss seeing you, I missed seeing you do that. I'd love to see how you made that happen. It's real simple. Ooh, I love the feeling of that. It really is good. Uh, and my little queen loaf, still kind of looks like a heart. I like it. <laughs> and it's purple. Go it's Tigers. Purple. I guess I should have made it pink. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you that you gifted me with a, a sweetheart who is so gifted and uh, talented to make such delicious and wonderful smelling food and to do so frugally. Uh, Lord, I pray you would uh, bless our lives together for many years to come that we may bring you glory in everything that we do. Thank you for the food that she's prepared and we pray that you would use it to strengthen and nourish our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, where do I start? <laughs> I'm going to try this onion roll. Mmm. Mm. It's good. Ooh, that's good. Mm. I'm so glad you did these little Brussels sprouts. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. How many more times are we going to get to uh, eat this pork roast? Two more times. No, I mean, how many more can you cook off of that? That's Pork what I'm roast, saying. It was long as my leg. There two. There's two more. There's two in the freezer. Plus, we're gonna have over half of this left. So that was an amazing meal. And now for some it. dessert. It's still hot too. You're killing my uh, nutrition plan. Give me a plate, please. Thanks for taking it easy on me, hon. Man, I feel like I need to show that. I'm very pleased with the way using the jelly turned out. Hope you can see that. Some of it just came out though. I'll put it back in. Mm. You should let it cool completely. But, I think I use my hands. That's what I should have done. Mm. I'm trying to be too sophisticated. Mm. <laughs> Do I have jelly on my face? Huh? Let me get it. <laughs> oh, God, me. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's sweet enough already. Mm -hmm. Have that mercy. So Have mercy. That's good. <laughs> that is really good. Mm. Really good. I gotta lick my fingers, too. Look at that. That's good. Mm. Well, we hope you enjoyed this frugal family food meal. And it was a frugal meal. It was. And it was a, it's not frugal on calories. <laughs> no, it's high on calories. <laughs> Low on dollars, but high on calories. But look, if you enjoy frugal family meals, I got news for you. Um, there's going to be a link, a card going across this video right about here. No, right about here. That'll point to a playlist full of YouTube videos focusing on, there's so many F's involved, <laughs> focusing on frugal family food videos. Don't forget to check out the Facebook group with over 100,000 people in it. If you're not Amazing. in it, you need to make it 100,001 or whatever. You need yes. to add to that number. Uh, links to the, to the playlist I mentioned uh, that you just saw in the card, as well as the Facebook group, can also be found in the description of this video. Please go check them out because there's video after video of delicious frugal meals just like this one. I can't talk anymore. My <laughs> mouth is still full. <laughs> Before you leave, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hey, give us a thumbs down even. If you don't like the video, that's fine. <laughs> we'll take all the interaction we can get. Now leave us a comment if you got any questions about the, the recipe or anything of that nature. And if you're not subscribed already, we sure would love to have you among our faithful viewers. We appreciate everyone. 
Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time at Alderman Farms. Have a great night.